Hello world and welcome back to another Mechanisms tutorial where today we're going to be covering all the basic ways that you can generate power inside of this mod. As always if this video helps you out in any way shape or form please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and ring the bell button for more Mechanism tutorials in the future. So guys as stated we are going to be going just over the basic power generations inside of Mechanism so that means today we will not be covering the fission reactor, this big massive steam turbine majigger as well as the fusion reactor. This is just the basic ways but those tutorials will be coming up next. So let's start off with our good old heat generation. Now we've covered the heat generator when we first started this Mechanism series but let's just cover it again so it's all in the one video here. Now to create the heat generator generator you are going to require three iron ingots, two of any types of wood, one osmium ingot, two copper ingots and a stone furnace in any sort of crafting table and this will give you the heat generator. Now we know how the heat generator works you can either cover the whole thing in whatever type of heat you would like whether that's fire even torches but we're going to use lava here cover it on as many sides as you possibly can and then you have your power output on the front here that's what this green ring is. So we place that down and inside it is already creating power power but what you can actually do if you want to is fill the inside of it with lava and then it will generate a lot lot quicker if you do it this way but you're going to have to find some sort of way of generating this sort of energy so that's a little bit difficult but if we feed it through into here you can see that I had this going just a little bit and it does generate a fair bit of power but the moment that all that lava is gone the energy generation severely decreases. Moving on now we have solar power now in order to get solar power there are two different tiers there's a regular solar generator and then the advanced to create the basic you are first going to need these solar panels now these solar panels are each going to require three glass panes two redstone one infused alloy and three osmium ingots and you are going to need three of these in total the three of these are going to go on the top of the crafting table then you're going to need a further two infused alloy either side one iron ingot in the middle you're going to need the energy tablet down at the bottom here we've covered this before and you're going to need two osmium ingots on the either side in any crafting table and this will give us our solar generator now the solar generator has a general tick but it depends on what the height is so if we place it here on top of this ultimate energy cube you can see inside that we have a little bit of stuff inside you can see it says 17.57 fe out of 38.4 all this is is telling us our internal buffer its internal buffer is 38,000 forge energy but we're currently producing 17.57 forge energy per tick and you can see this little indicator here means that it's working if you had a block above this it would stop working because it technically means it's dark so you always need direct sunlight or direct view of the sky this solar generator does but this also sort of depends on the heights that you have it in the world so as you can see we are currently at let's see y level 64 but in here we're making just under 18 if we go way up here in the sky i've got another energy cube and let's place another one on here and see how good it actually performs for us so if we just press shift on there we can see that up here we're now creating 18.2 that's about a 0.7 fe per tick increase not the greatest but the further you go the little bit better it will be moving on of course we have the advanced generator now the advanced generator is going to require four of these solar panels then a further two infused alloys and three iron ingots in the crafting table and now the advanced solar panel is a little bit bigger as you can see in your hand you can place it down anywhere you like i am going to place it just on top of here if i hold shift there you go now the solar generator is creating a lot more power the interface is the exactly the same as the basic but now you can see that it's got a higher storage of 80,000 forge energy but we are producing 105.72 forge energy per tick now this has got a very very similar way of working from the basic so if we go higher in the sky we'll we should produce just a little bit more power and there we go we are now producing 109.47 so that's a, about a four forge energy per tick just from having at the same level as the basic moving on from a little bit of the green energy let's go and work our way into the bio generator now the bio generator is going to require a brand new item this is going to be biofuel i will show you how to make that shortly but the rest of the recipe is going to require one basic control circuit two infused alloys two redstone and two iron ingots in any crafting table and this is going to give you your bio generator now in order to make biofuel there are multiple multiple ways but essentially you're going to need the crusher now we've covered this crusher before now in order to make the biofuel you are going to have to crush pretty much any type of organic matter that is in the game so for example we're going to use roses 
either nether warp block and hay bales. Now, depending on what you use, you can get different amounts. So if I actually pick this up here and look into our crafting table here or inside our JEI, let's do it a better way. Let's get some biofuel here and say recipes. As you can see in here, nether warp gives us seven, but this peony only gives us five. And depending on what you put in here, it depends on what you get. So leaves gives us two, tall grass gives us four, and so on and so forth. But just to prove the theory of how it works, let's chuck one nether wart in here. You can see we get seven. Let's chuck some roses in here. You can see we get five. And if we chuck some hay in there, I believe we also get seven. Yes, we do. Hay is probably a very good one because that's easily created from wheat. But then we have a load of biofuel. After that, you just simply slap it in your biofuel generator and it will start crafting away it's got an internal buffer as you can see of biofuel that's stored inside you can't really hover over it to see how much is actually left in there but at least you have a visual indicator never mind right in the center it actually tells you how much biofuel completely missed that but as you can see we are creating 280 fe per tick and that's pretty much the maximum you're going to be able to get out of this there's no sort of buffs to this that you can put in there's no upgrades as you can see here in the corner this again also has an internal buffer it goes up to 64 thousand fe and at the moment we have 140 because we are constantly pumping out that this isn't increasing of course so in here we've already gained 100 thousand fe very very powerful stuff and not a bad early way of actually making decent power generation something a little bit more in the late game now we are going to cover the gas burning generator now this is going to require all blocks that we've seen before one being the electrolytic core two infused alloys two steel casings and four osmium ingots and this is going to give us the best gas burning generator now the gas burning generator can be run directly off hydrogen hydrogen is created by splitting water in the electrolytic separator into oxygen and hydrogen but there is a better way of actually using the gas burning generator and that's by using ethylene so to make ethylene we are first going to need another brand new machine and this is the pressurized reaction chamber now the pressurized reaction chamber is first going to need a uh, an enrichment chamber two basic control circuits one infused alloy four two steel ingot sorry two basic chemical tanks and one dynamic tank now the dynamic tank is created with four steel and one bucket and you actually get four of these per craft so you can easily make four of these pressurized reaction chambers if you wanted to now the pressurized reaction chamber as we said it's going to require um, some biofuel but as well as that it's still going to need hydrogen so in here you can see i've already actually made one this is going to give a substrate you're going to need two things for the pressurized reaction chamber you're going to need water and hydrogen so what we have set up here we've got pump pumping into electrolytic separator and our pressurized reaction chamber inside the electrolytic separator we are sending our hydrogen out to the pressure chamber and we're dumping the excess of oxygen to keep it going so inside of here you can see we have loads of hydrogen and we need actually to have two biofuel in order to make this work. So if I put one in here, nothing happens. I'll put a second and the craft starts working. So let's just place this all in here for now. Now, as you can see, this is going to actually create substrate. Now, substrate is your beginning process of actually making plastics, but we are not going to be covering plastics today. But the byproduct we get here is ethylene, as you can see. We get 100 mill millibuckets of ethylene per craft or completion of this process. Now, if we take our pressurized tubes here and have it pump straight into our gas burning generator, just to place it down, you can see that every side besides the bottom of it is actually an input, and as usual, the green circle is an output. So we have a ultimate energy cube just here. If we take our pressurized tubes just here, send it in, you can see that straight away we are producing a fair amount of power. Now it tells us our burn rates. We are burning this ethylene at 0.35 millibuckets per tick. Now if we keep this running, this is actually going to increase the amount of burn rates over time. So you want to keep this topped up. Now the quicker it burns, the quicker power you actually create. So every time this ticks up, we are gaining just a little bit more power each time. But as you can see, I can't, can't quite keep up with the generation. It's getting close. We are still gaining. Oh, maybe not. It's, it's rough. It's rough. But as long as you have a steady stream of ethylene this is going to tick up and now you can see that inside we are generating at a pretty rapid rate considering we're already at 3.8 million in here and that's absolutely insane 
Now let's end off today's episode by actually going back to a little bit of green energy and that is by creating the wind generator. For this you're going to require three osmium ingots, one infused alloy, one basic control circuit and two energy tablets in any sort of crafting table. Now the wind generator only has two outputs, one is on the front as you can see this is quite big, it's actually five blocks tall and actually the bottom of it works as well as a power source. So if you place this down in here you can see that we're going to start filling up this here and it is a very very quick almost on par with the biofuel generator in my opinion now inside of here we can see a couple of different things we have a little indicator on the side here similar to the solar panel that tells us it's working this has an internal buffer of 80,000 kilo forge not 80,000 kilo forge 80,000 forge energy and we are currently got a power of 55.9 this is the amount of power that is actually being pushed out of this wind generator even though the out says here 384 the power is actually actually this here it's a little bit confusing but that is how it works i think this is sort of a maximum amount it could possibly push out 384 so this works the very same way as the solar power meaning the higher you go up the more it's going to push out so if we go all the way up here and place another wind turbine in the same alignment as our solar panels over there just to give it a fair test if we place this down here we can now see that we are producing 101.09 power now that's actually nearly double what we have down there so it definitely pays to have these wind turbines a lot higher up than you would with the solar panels now unfortunately that is everything I can show you today when it comes to the basic power generations inside of Mechanism but if this video helped you out in any way shape or form please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe it really helps me out and ring the bell button for more tutorials in the future as next time we're going to be covering the advanced ways of getting power those being the nuclear power plant that is the fission reactor as well as that we may even cover the boiler and the large steam turbine and then if we are even lucky and we make this episode really long maybe even the fusion reactor as well it's going to be a bit of a long one that one but i'm excited so until next time guys take care